Father, we come before you today thankful for your presence that we already have in this room. Yes, God. Reach down now to the heart and mind of every yes. individual here, yes. every individual that may see this later recorded. Yes. Grant to them that direction of the Holy Spirit that they may please you well. Yes, Bless God. today and anoint us today for your glory. Yes. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
love and mercy washing over all our sin.
I'm sure I'm doing this. That one is on too. You can hear and I just turned it off.
Now it's time to do this. The apostle Paul said, uh, Amen. He said, I came not, I come not to baptize, uh, but to preach the gospel. Uh, not with make wisdom of man's words, uh, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Uh, amen. Uh, but I'm here today to preach uh, the word of God. Uh, amen. With authority uh, and with the power and the anointing uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, yeah. Because God wants to change uh, people's lives today. Uh, and I believe in my heart uh, and in my soul. Uh, amen. Uh, that that's how, how God is uh, with some preachers. Uh, amen. Uh, that's the anointing that He's put on me. Uh, amen. Uh, is to be as a flame of fire. Uh, as a brand that's plucked out of the fire. Uh, amen. Uh, and that's what we are. Uh, we're fire brands. Uh, amen. Uh, it's not necessarily to stir up uh, of your heart, uh, but it's to defeat the devil. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, I am sick uh, and I'm tired. Uh, amen. Uh, of the devil uh, taking uh, uh, authority over God's people. Uh, amen. Uh, he comes in uh, and he tries to hinder. He tries to stop uh, uh, the work of God. Uh, amen. Uh, just like he did in Nehemiah. I believe it's in Nehemiah chapter 4. Uh, uh, Nehemiah was trying to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Uh, amen. Uh, and he told his people, he said, work with one hand uh, and have your sword in the other. Uh, and that's what we've got to do today, church. Uh, we've got to work with one hand. Uh, we got to have our sword in the other hand. Uh, amen. Uh, or uh, Sam, Malay, and Tobiah, if my memory serves me correct. Uh, amen. Uh, Sam, Malay, and Tobiah, they did everything they, they could to stop the work. Uh, they did everything they could uh, to stop Nehemiah from rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. Uh, and when they saw that it couldn't be stopped, uh, then they did everything in their power to hinder it. That's what the devil's doing today. Yeah. He's trying to hinder God's work. Uh, amen. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, uh, were known as the sons of thunder. Uh, amen. Uh, they were called the bow energies. Uh, and what the bow energies means, uh, it literally means a powerful preacher. It means preaching as a flame of fire. Yeah. How they preached. Oh. Amen. Yeah. And the demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. Church, I pray today that God shakes uh, this place. Uh, amen. Uh, with the sound uh, of revival. Uh, amen. I pray uh, that He moves today in our midst. Uh, and He brings deliverance uh, and healing. Uh, amen. Uh, I pray uh, that God breaks uh, the shackles of, of sickness uh, and disease. Uh, I'm tired the devil. Uh, and I'm serving notice on him today uh, yeah. that he is a defeated foe. Uh, yeah. He has no power. He has no authority. Uh, amen. Against God's people. Uh, against attacking God's people with sickness uh, and an injury. Uh, I'm taking authority uh, over Satan. Uh, I'm taking authority over depression. Uh, I'm taking authority over macular degeneration. Uh, I'm taking authority over cancer. Uh, I'm taking I'm taking authority over Crohn's disease. Amen. And aneurysms. Brother Roger. And heart disease. And joint disease. And kidney disease. And diabetes. And glaucoma. And respiratory disease. And hypertension. And atrial fibrillation. Amen. And fatigue. And back pain. And neck pain. And pinched nerves. Or in hidden injuries, oh. I'm taking authority over them. In the name of Jesus Christ, the time of captivity is over. Hallelujah, it's over. Satan tries to take God's people captive. Amen. The Adamic age was from creation to the flood. Amen. The Noetian age was from the flood to Abraham. The Abrahamic age was from uh, Abraham's call to the giving of the law. Then the Messianic, Messianic age uh, was from uh, the giving uh, of the law to King David. Uh, the Davidic age was from the uh, David becoming king uh, through the time of the restoration. 
restoration. And then it was the Asriatic age from restoration through Malachi to the birth of Christ. But now we're in the, in the age of grace. We're in the age, the Christian age, the spiritual age from the birth of Christ till now. Amen. It's called the new covenant. Hallelujah. The grace covenant. It's a time of restoration between God and between man. And that's what God's doing today. He is bringing restoration of his people. He's bringing restoration of his church. The devil's mad. He knows that he has been a short time for him. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. Lord, oh, we are the temple of God. Glory. Hallelujah. That's what I'm preaching on this morning. Is that we are the temple. The name of this message is called the building of the temple. If you have your Bible, you're welcome to turn with me to 1 Chronicles. Chapter 28. Woo! That's pretty hard preaching for a 62-year-old man. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God is my strength. Yes. Hallelujah. Church, the temple, the first temple, now I'm going to be referring to the first temple and the second temple, but all I'm, all I'm doing is, is I'm, I'm referring to the first temple as Solomon's temple. And then I'm referring to the second temple as we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. There was actually another temple that was built. It was this, the first temple was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar, and um, it was rebuilt by, by Herod the Great and, and the, uh, the Jews. But, uh, I'm, I'm just counting all that as the first time. Just to let y'all know. God. The temple. Now I'm reading 1 uh, Chronicles 28 and verse 11. The temple, the first temple was directed and modeled by God. God was the architect of Solomon's temple. But church, God is still the architect of your temple. Amen. Amen. God gave King David, who was the father of Solomon, the plan by the Spirit of God. Let's read that. Verse 11. 1 Chronicles chapter 28. Then David, who's the father of Solomon, gave to Solomon his son the pattern of the porch and of the houses thereof and of the treasuries thereof and of the upper chambers thereof and of the inner parlors thereof and of the place of the mercy seat and the pattern of all that he had. By the Spirit. By the Spirit. Yes. It's the Spirit that gave him the dimensions. It was the Spirit that gave him the plan. Amen. Now let's read on. Of the courts of the house of the Lord and all of the chambers round about of the treasuries of the house of God and of the treasuries of the dedicated things. Amen. His plan had the beauty of holiness. But the first temple was made by flesh. We're going to look at this here in just a minute. But the second temple, which is us, was made and is being still made by the Holy Spirit of God. The first temple was made by hewn stones quarried away from the building site. It was a temple of peace. 
No iron to be heard. No hammer to be heard. No iron to be used. Each nail that they had was made out of 50 shekels of gold and it weighed 20 ounces. And to be honest with you, they tried not to use a whole lot of those. But there was no iron. It was a place of peace. It was a place of sanctification. And it was a place of holiness. Turn to 2 Chronicles real quick. Chapter 3, verse 9. And the weight of the nails. Brother and sister nail, did y'all know that your name is in the Bible? <laughs> and the weight of the nails was 50 shekels of gold, which is 20 ounces. And he overlaid the upper chambers with gold. The first temple was made by huge stones. Now I brought this with me this morning and I understand that this is not a stone. But I'm going to use this as an example. This is wood. But y'all pretend like it's a stone. They took the stones out of the quarry. We're going to read about all this here. In but the stones were, were rough. The stones were, were broken. They had holes in them. But they began to work with those stones. It's just like this wood. This, this was just an old piece of wood that's dead. Good for nothing. Except to be thrown in the wood pile. Are you hearing me this morning, church? We just celebrated to you. We're all worthy of hellfire because of sin. It's just by the grace of God, by the grace of Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, that we have redemption. This old piece of wood, somebody found it. They picked it up. They began to turn it. They began to smooth it. They began to turn it into something useful. It's just like the rocks that were used, the granite that was used for the temple. They took them, just like this old piece of wood, and they had to smooth them and polish them. But see, that's what God does to us. He takes this old worthless dead piece of wood and He picks it up and the, the Master carpenter, who is Jesus, he begins to polish it. He begins to turn it. It still has scars. It still has has holes in it a little bit. Amen. But he turns it into something that's useful. Amen. There's none perfect, no not one. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. It's just by the grace of God. The Apostle Paul tells us that the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. That's found in Ephesians 2, 19 and 20. It is from here that the church grows into a holy temple. A habitation of God by the Spirit of God. In Solomon's temple, the stones had to be blasted. Is shaken out of the quarries of King Solomon by his quarry men. They were removed from their natural surroundings. They were originally rough stones, unhewn stones, unshaped stones, and without purpose. That's how we are. That's how I was. I was unhewn. I had no purpose. Amen. Until I found Jesus at the cross. Hallelujah. And he picked me up. He picked me up. Amen. And he saved us. Amen. And he gave me up. 
The scripture says that these stones for the temple were made ready before being brought to the temple site of being placed. There was no sound of the hammer. There was no sound of the axe. Nor any tool of iron in the house while it was being built. Because it was sanctified in its home. Let's turn to 1 Kings chapter 6. Amen. 1 Kings. Actually, I'm going to begin reading it in 1 uh, Kings chapter 5. Let's start in verse 15. Solomon had three score and ten thousand. I'm in First Kings chapter five, verse fifteen. And Solomon had three score and ten thousand that bear burdens, and four score thousand hewers in the mountains. Amen. He had seventy thousand men, three score and ten thousand that bear burdens up. And then he had another 80,000 men who were hewers in the mountains. That there alone is 150,000 men besides the chief of Solomon's offers which were all over the world. 3,300 supervisors which ruled over the people that wronged in the work. So he had three and a half thousand supervisors that were supervising the other 150,000. He had 153,500 men, uh, amen, that were working uh, on the first temple. Hallelujah. But the first temple was made by flesh and blood. Those 153,500 were all men. Amen. That first temple only lasted 480 years. It's, all, it's a long time. But it only lasted 480 years. And then it was destroyed. It came down. God said, Amen, I'm going to make a new temple. But this time I'm only going to use one man. Oh, hallelujah. And his name is Jesus Christ. Uh, hallelujah. He's the maker and the builder of our temple. Uh, amen. Uh, and it'll never pass away. And the king commanded verse 17. And they brought great stones, costly stones, and huge stones to lay the foundation of the house. This church has been here for over 40 or 50 or 60 years. I don't even know. Because it has a sure foundation. That's it. Yeah. Let's read on. I'll expound on this. And Solomon's builders and Hiram's builders did hew them. And the stone squares so they prepared timber and stones to build the house. Chapter 6, verse 1. And it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt. And in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month Ziph, uh, which is the second month that he began to build the, the house uh, of the Lord. Uh, you may say, Brother Ken, why did it take 480 years? Uh, amen. After the children of Israel came out of the bondage of Egypt. Uh, amen. Uh, I'll tell you why. Uh, amen. God uh, wanted to wait 12 generations. Uh, one generation is 40 years. Uh, amen. Uh, in 40 uh, times 12 is 480. Uh, but God had a reason for it. Uh, amen. Uh, the tribes, uh, you see the number 12. Uh, amen. Uh, it represents uh, perfect authority. That's what it represents. That's why there were 12 tribes of Israel. That's why there's 12 gates to the new Jerusalem. That's why there's 12 foundations in the new Jerusalem. That's why we have 12 numbers on our clock today. 
Amen. That's why we have 12 jurors on a court of law. Amen. It's because it represents perfect authority. That's what we're doing today is we're taking authority over Satan. Amen. Amen. We're taking, in the name of Jesus, we're taking authority over now, he said, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign, well, it took three years for them to organize. It took three years to, to get all the material, to separate everything, to organize everything. And then in, in the fourth year, they began work on the temple. In the month Zif, the first month in the Hebrew calendar is... Nisan, which is actually our April on the Gregorian calendar. It's April. Zip is the second month, month which was May. So we know that it was in the month of May. And the house which the king Solomon built for the Lord, the length thereof was three score cubits. One cubit is one and a half feet. Here to here. So therefore, three score cubits, or 60 cubits, would, means that it would have been 90 feet long. And the breadth, 20 cubits. 20 cubits is 30 feet wide. And the height thereof, 30 cubits, which is 45 feet tall. Verse 3. And the porch before the temple of the house, 20 cubits, which was 30 feet long. Thereof, according to the breadth of the house, and 10 cubits was the breadth thereof before the house. Let's see. 10 cubits would have been 15 feet. Now remember, church, we're talking about the building of the temple. And for the house, he made windows of narrow lights. Now, church, this was a strategic move on Solomon's part, which the instructions were given by David, his father, to him. But the windows on the temple, they were narrow on the outside, yet they, they beveled they built an outward on the inside. Now that had two purposes. Number one, it was it was for safety. I mean, it, you can't access a narrow window. But when it opened up on the inside, it led in the light. And it, it led in it. They had natural light. Amen. Led in the light. The Bible says that we have to be wise as serpents in the light illuminated, illuminated every aspect of their lives. Now let's read on. Verse 4. And for the house he made windows of narrow lines, and against the wall of the house he built chambers round about, to, against the walls of the house round about, both of the temple and of the oracle. The oracle was the holy of holies. Uh, and he made chambers round about. Uh, the chambers were made for storage. Uh, is what they used the chambers for. And the nethermost chamber was five cubits broad. Which is seven and a half feet wide. Uh, and the middle was six cubits. Which, which was... Uh, I think nine... Nine feet. And the third was seven cubits broad, for without in the wall of the house he made narrow rest round about that the beams should not be fastened in the walls thereof. Amen. And so they, they had they had the temple, then they had these chambers that they used for storage. But I want you to know that the chambers, they intermittently got bigger and bigger and bigger. The first one started off at five. Then the next one went to six. Then the next one went to seven. And what this represents, this represents a, a growing process. 
Because you see, it's a process. Amen? It's a process. And then he made narrow rest about that the beam should not be fastened in the walls of the house. The reason that they should not be fastened is because he wanted them to be at liberty to move. They weren't nailed down and fixed. Uh, amen. Uh, they weren't solid like this pulpit is. Uh, amen. But the beams uh, sat up on top, uh, amen, uh, of, of, of the support. Uh, and they were able to, to move a little bit. Amen. The Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yes. Liberty. Amen. Verse 7, in the house, when it was in building, was built of stone. Amen. It made ready before it was brought thither, so that there was neither hammer, nor axe, nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was in the building. Amen. Let's turn to Matthew in chapter 7 and verse 24 real quick. Amen. I just want to read this to you. Matthew in chapter 7. Verse 24 says, Therefore, whosoever uh, heareth these sayings of mine uh, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man uh, which built his house, his house uh, upon a rock. Uh, amen. Uh, Jesus Christ uh, is that rock. Uh, he is the chief cornerstone. Uh, amen. Uh, you're wise if you build upon the rock. Uh, and the rain descended. Uh, and the floods came. Uh, and the winds blew. Uh, and beat uh, upon that house. Uh, and it fell not. Uh, for it was founded uh, upon a rock. Uh, amen. Uh, the devil can blow. Uh, amen. Uh, he can pour out like a flood. Uh, amen. Uh, but this house, uh, your temple, uh, cannot be destroyed in the name of Jesus as long as you're walking with God. You have power over Satan. Let me finish that out. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them shall be likened unto a, likened unto a foolish man who is built and doeth them not. Whosoever hears these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of the earth. Amen. The temple is built upon the rock. Verse 8. The door for the middle chamber was in the right side of the house. And they went up with winding stairs. Amen. There were two spiral staircases in that temple. Amen. I'm not going to execute on that. I'm trying to watch my time. And the word, verse 11, And the word of the Lord came to Solomon, saying, Concerning this house which thou art building, uh, if thou wilt walk in my statutes and execute my judgments and keep all my commandments uh, to walk in them, then I will perform my word with thee, uh, which spake uh, unto David, which I spake unto David, uh, thy father. And I will dwell among the children of Israel and will not forsake my people Israel. Uh, hallelujah. God is not going to forsake Israel. And God told Solomon, he said, if you'll just listen, uh, if you'll do what I say, uh, the Lord is speaking that today. Uh, if you'll just listen uh, and do what he says, uh, he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Solomon built the house and he finished it. Oh. He finished it. He didn't start it and then stop. He didn't go halfway. Oh. He finished the work. Amen. Church, that's why we have to be. If we start the work, we have to finish the work. Yeah. We have to endure to the end. They that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. We can't sell out. A lot of people sell out too cheap. 
The first little thing that comes along, the first time the roof gets blown off the house. Oh, woe is me. I'm just using that as an example. I'm not saying you do that. I'm saying some people do. Why did God let that happen? The first time somebody loses a love when they get mad at God. The first time temptation rolls around, they say, oh, well, a little bit more hurt. And they don't finish the work. Can't be that way. Yeah. Verse 15, and he built the walls of the house within the boards of cedar, both the floor of the house and the walls of the ceiling, and he covered them on the inside with wood, and he covered the floor of the house with planks of fur, and he built 20 cubits uh, on the sides of the house, both the floor and the walls, uh, with boards of cedar, even built them for it within, even for the oracle, even for the most holy planks. And the house that, that is, the temple before, it was 40 cubits long, 60 feet, and the cedar of the house within was carved with knots, uh, knots, uh, or little decorative uh, 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 ornaments. Uh, what they represent is they represent almonds, but they just used them like in the candlesticks, and they used them up and they carved them in the wood. They were just for decoration. With knots and open flowers, it was beautiful. All was cedar. There was no stone seen. Uh, and the oracle he prepared in the house within uh, to set there the ark uh, of the covenant uh, of the Lord. Uh, okay, so he covered uh, everything uh, with cedar. Uh, cedar uh, represents that God uh, is great uh, and strong. Uh, cedar wood is strong. Uh, it won't rot. Uh, amen. Uh, but it'll last. Uh, and that's what that represents. Uh, we have to be built up. Uh, we have to be covered uh, with cedar. Amen. Amen. So that we won't be swayed with every temptation. And every time there's a fiery dart of the devil, we can be strong uh, and say, I'm strong uh, through God. Yeah. Hallelujah. The fir tree represented strength and durability. Enduring it to the end. The cedar, as I just said, represents God's greatness and strength and strong. But Jesus is our strength. And the oracle, the holy of holies, four part was 20 cubits in length and 20 cubits in breadth and 20 cubits in height. Uh, amen. Uh, it was 30 feet long. It was 30 feet wide. It was 30 feet tall. And it housed uh, the Ark uh, of the Covenant. Uh, and this is what the Ark of the Covenant looked like. Uh, uh, this form of mercy seat. Uh, there was Aaron's uh, there, there was Aaron's rod in here. Uh, there was this is Aaron's rod right here. Uh, uh, that represented uh, Amen, his authority and his rule. Uh, amen. This was the law, the Ten Commandments of God. Uh, and the manna, amen, a, a bowl of manna was also in there. Is what, and what that represents, that represents, uh, amen, uh, that God uh, will feed you. Uh, and God will never forsake you. Uh, amen. But he'll be with you uh, until the end of the world. So Solomon overlaid the house within with pure gold. And he made a partition by the chains of gold before the oracle. And he overlaid it with gold. Gold represents the word of God. You can read about it in Revelation 3. And I believe, Pastor Bill, it's, it's verse 17, I believe. Amen. But God challenges us. He said, buy me gold that's dried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. Your 
two is the other wing of the cherub. Uh, from the uttermost part of the one wing uh, to the uttermost part of the other wing, ten cubits, uh, fifteen feet. Uh, and the other cherub uh, was ten cubits. Both the cherubs uh, were one measure and one size. Uh, they were fifteen feet wide and fifteen feet tall. Uh, the height of the one cherub was ten cubits, uh, which is fifteen feet. And so was it. So was the other cherub, uh, and he set the cherubims uh, within the inner house, uh, and they stretched forth the wings of the cherubim, so that the wing uh, of the one touched the one wall, and the wing of the other touched cherub touched the other wall, and their wings touched one another uh, in the midst uh, of the house. Uh, amen. Uh, the cherubims uh, they represent uh, that they, they, they shower uh, God's. Uh, Glory uh, on earth. Uh, amen. Uh, that's what the cherubims do. Uh, the seraphims uh, are in heaven. Uh, the seraphims, uh, they shower out God's glory in heaven uh, upon the saints of God that are there. Uh, but the cherubim, uh, I'm sorry, the, yes, the cherubim, uh, amen. Uh, he put them in the Holy of Holies uh, and they were there uh, as a protector, uh, amen, uh, of the ark, uh, of the covenant, uh, which represented It was a process. 
It took him seven years, which is God's perfect number. Represents completeness with God. The temple lasted 580 years. It was torn down by Nebuchadnezzar. But I want to make this one point. The outside of the temple was weathered. It was scarred. It was exposed. To the elements. But inside, it was holy and it was sanctified. Christ, I'm closing. Christ has not called us to simply enter the doorway of salvation. He has called us all the way in so that we can experience the fullness of His glory. Now, we have access through Jesus. See, there's one thing I didn't mention yet about the temple. But the temple had a veil. The veil of the temple that covered the Holy of Holies, the inner city. That veil was 60 it was 30 feet tall. It was as thick as the breadth of a man's hand. Which means it was between 4 and 6 inches thick. It weighed up to 18,000 pounds. That's 9 tons. It took 300 priests with ropes and pulleys to pull it into place. There was no access to the Holy of Holies uh, except by the priest. Uh, and that was only once a year. And they had to put bells uh, on the bottom of his tallit uh, in case a rope around his ankle in case he died in the presence of God so they could drag him out. The church on resurrection morning Resurrection. Amen. We be made endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Hallelujah. On resurrection. Amen. Amen. Let me back up. Let me back up. I'm getting ahead of myself. Christ hung on the cross for six hours. From 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. When he cried out, he lied. La bon sabon thaina, which is me, my God, my God, my God, my God, my Because of the sin that he had for all of mankind, from all times forward, he had he carried it. God had literally turned his face away. And then he cried out, It is finished. Brother, that that's 30 feet tall. Church, that's three stories tall. 60 feet long. Four to six inches thick. They put together 72 uh, quilting squares. And they put them together in order to make it. It took a year to make it. That huge, gigantic barrier was split from the top to the bottom and it fell off. Hallelujah. Because God has given us access to Him. We have access. We don't have to put up with, with, the, with the inconveniences and the hindrances of the devil. We have access. We have door authority. We have power. We are the temple, and I was going to read that to you out of 1 Corinthians, but take my word for it. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 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 Amen. <laughs> I'm closing with that. Make sure. 
up. My closing words are, and we must keep it home. Oh, yeah. Amen. God bless you. Yeah. I love you. Thank you all for enduring and staying here what God has told us.